Hello class. When we take a look at cyclohexane, we can see that there's going to be 12 hydrogens. And we get only one signal for those 12 hydrogens. Now what's interesting here is if you do the replacement test between this axial hydrogen and this equatorial hydrogen, you will see that they are not equivalent. But why are they giving us one signal when they're not equivalent? Well, it has to do with timing. So we know chairs, they do a chair flip, right? And they do it about 10 to the negative five seconds. That's how long it takes. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, quick, quick, quick. But in order to take an NMR spectrum, it takes about one second. So what's happening here is that the NMR can't, well, let's back up a little bit. It's kind of like this analogy, taking a picture. Have you ever had to take a picture when you had little kids in uh, the photo and they're constantly moving, waving their arms? Have you ever taken those pictures where the kids are waving their arms and you take a picture, but the hand is like a blob or a blur? It's because the camera can't take a picture fast enough to capture the, the hand where it is in space and time. So it's just a blob of it or a blur. That's kind of what's happening here in an NMR is that the hydrogens here are axial and equatorial and the NMR is trying to take a picture of what it looks like, but the the hydrogens are flipping so fast that the NMR can't take a good picture of it. So what we have is only one signal because it's taking the average of the axial and equatorial states. That is why we only get one signal. It's just averaging the proton environment. And that same concept applies to something that we've already discussed. That is methyl hydrogens. We can see in this snapshot in time, if we could freeze time, we see that this hydrogen is close to that oxygen, whereas this hydrogen is not as close to that, that oxygen. So why do we get just one signal? Well, it has to do with the speed of the, ex the NMR experiment. Those three hydrogens are spinning at such a high rate of speed that we are just taking the average of those three protons to give us one signal. Recall that methyl hydrogens are always equivalent. Okay, That's what's happening there. The other thing that we need to be aware of is the solvents that we use to do our NMR experiments. If you have your molecule of interest, if it's a solid or liquid, you're going to dissolve it in a solvent. And these are the common solvents that we use in NMR. We have chloroform, DMSO, water, and methanol. Now, do you see a problem, though, with these solvents if we use these? Do you see all these hydrogens? Hydrogens, hydrogens. Those hydrogens are going to give a lot of signal. And since the solvent is going to be in such excess concentrate in such excess concentration in comparison to your molecule of interest, the signals for these protons are going to drown it out and you won't be able to see your molecule. So what scientists have done is that they made solvents deuterated solvents. So deuterated solvents are simply you take all the hydrogens in your solvents and you replace them with deuterium. And deuterium is not NMR active. So you won't see it in the NMR. Isn't that pretty cool? So you use deuterated solvents to do your NMR experiments. And replace it all right there. Replace all the hydrogens with deuterium. Now, we've seen this NMR spectrum before. And one thing I want to highlight to you is that we would only expect two NMR signals, right? So one, two, perfect. This one right here is the TMS reference. We know we just ignore that. But then, hey, 
What's that little blip right there? That's a signal, but it's very, very tiny. What's happening here is when you buy deuterated solvents, you would expect 100% of your deuterated solvent to be like this, but that's not true. It's not perfect. There's going to be a small, small amount of uh, undeuterated solvent. So for example, if you buy chloroform, most of it's going to look like this but there will be trace amounts of chloroform with the hydrogens. Clean that up there. Okay. So we would have most of that, small amounts of that. And so that small trace amount of chloroform that's not deuterated gives us that little signal right there. So that little signal right there is not part of our molecule of interest. It is the undeuterated solvent.